This is one of my steepest local climbs. It's not Alpe d'Huez, it's not even the Stelvio, but what it lacks in altitude and mystique, it more than makes up for with gradient, because at its steepest, about here, it's a whopping 40%, ouch. So today, the reason I'm here, I set myself a challenge to see if I can take on the KOM, see how far up the leaderboard I can get. To help me in my challenge today, it's a brand new SRAM Force ETAP Access Wide group set. This brand new group set is designed to make climbing easier. It offers a wider range of any two by group set on the market right now. It's got smaller chain rings, 4330, and a bigger cassette, 1036, which combined means much lower gears. So when the going gets steep, hopefully I'll be able to keep on spinning rather than grinding. Well, that's the plan anyway, but before I embark on this mighty challenge, let's talk about what matters when climbing with some top tips. There are quite a few ways to make climbing easier, of course. You could buy an e-bike, a joke, I'm joking. But being serious, gravity is the main factor you face when climbing, and weight is one of the biggest areas you can look at to try and make climbing easier. Now, the biggest place to start is your own body, um, but saving weight on the body, as we know, is a slow process requiring massive commitment and dedication, not having cake after dinner, uh, counting your calories, smaller portions and so on, and it does take time. But the rewards are worth it because you can save much more weight on the body compared to the bike at a percentage of your overall uh, system weight. Uh, once you've got your body as trim as possible, then you look at your bike and you can make much easier savings on your bike just by the click of a, a mouse button on your favorite online retailer if you've got enough cash to spend on your bike, of course. The obvious place to start is with the frame and going carbon and spending as much as you can because the top end carbon frames can be as light as sub 700 grams. So some serious savings there to be made. Next place are the wheels and tires. You can save a chunk of weight on the wheels, especially on entry level bikes, which have quite heavy wheels. So you can get lightweight wheels, not necessarily carbon. Alloy wheels are still very lightweight for the money as well. And then tyres, you can save a lot of weight on tyres. Again, tubeless can save a bit of weight as well, or use latex inner tubes in place of butyl inner tubes. And then the group set, you can save weight there. And then all the finishing components like a saddle, handlebar, um, you can save quite a few grams and you have to really start adding up all the small savings over the whole bike to get the weight down. And once you get below seven kilograms, the savings become a lot harder and a lot more expensive to make. So you have to decide how prepared you are to spend money on your bike to make it lighter. So that's weight, weight on the body and weight on the bike. And then the other key factor, regardless of the weight of your bike, is the gearing. No matter how light you are or your bike, if your gearing is too tall, you are gonna struggle on the climbs. Lower gears will allow you to spin more easily up the climbs, maintain a high cadence, which is much more efficient than a bigger gear which requires a low cadence and a lot more leg strength to get you up the climbs. Whether local short climbs like this here or big mountain climbs in the Alps. So get the right gearing for the climbing you are doing. Oh, this road gets really steep.
Wow, that was tough. <laughs> it's not a climb I do that often, and I remember why. It's so steep, so short, but blimey, it packs a punch. <sighs> dear, oh dear. Right, time to find out whether I've got anywhere near the KOM. Let me consult Strava. Other platforms are available. So good news and bad news. Uh, the good news, I set a new PB, uh, which is good. So yeah, I improved on my previous attempts. So the gearing definitely helped me out. The bad news, I didn't get the KOM um, at all. I didn't even make it on to top 10, I know. And I'm sadly a minute off, one minute just about off the KOM. So some serious work to do on the fitness front, I think. I know the person who's got a KOM as well and he's pretty handy on climbs and has a super lightweight Evo with lightweight wheels. So yeah, I could do better. I know, I'm sorry, I disappointed. I didn't get the KOM or anywhere near it. But all that said, the group set did help me set a new PB a new fastest time ever on the climb. So that's not a bad thing at all. The group set has clearly worked, um, but it does show that fitness and uh, weight and natural talent are the biggest requirements on climbs if you want to get anywhere near the, the KOM. But if you're not worried about KOM, and to be honest, I'm not really bothered about KOMs anymore. I'm long past caring about KOMs. I just want to get up climbs and enjoy the rides. And this group set is helping me to enjoy the climbs more than I have done before. We've really seen group sets evolving over the last few years with a particular focus on lower range gears to make cycling more accessible for people who don't have Chris Froome levels of fitness. And this new group set is a step in the right direction. To put a group set in context and give you an idea of who it's for and if it's for you, if you're doing long distance endurance rides with lots of climbing, or you're planning a very hilly sportive or Grand Fondo with two, three, or 4,000 meters of climbing up and down the mountains, you're gonna want low gears. And this group set is gonna help you when the going gets tough, give you more range, give you lower gears, help you spin rather than grind. So if you're that sort of rider, then a group set would definitely appeal to you. Is it low enough though? Well, well, I think for endurance riding, long distance riding, if you like your hills, it just gives you the ability to get up the climbs with less strain than a higher geared group set. So spinning rather than grinding, and that is a good thing in my book. For off-road, gravel and adventure use, which this group set is also aimed at with the increased tire clearance from the front mech and the chain set being pushed outboard to allow bigger tires to be more easily fitted, this group set will offer an additional option over regular force, but I still think there's an obvious gap in the range for a 1040 cassette. At the moment, in my opinion, the best SRAM setup for off-road gravel use is a mullet setup, a one by with a Eagle 1050 cassette on the back, give you that wide range you need for off-road. When you're going bike packing and adding weight to the bike and going where the hills are usually quite steep, and the terrain is usually quite slippery. But if you're building a gravel and adventure bike and you do want two by, because there's a lot to like about two by, good overall range, you get nice smooth cadence steps on the cassette at the back, then this could be a good option for you at the moment. But for road use, there's an easier argument to make if you want lower gears than your current group set is offering. So I think SRAM done a great job with the group set. In terms of use, the group set has been really exceptional. Shifting is fast, precise. This group set has been very quiet because we've now got elastoma damping material in between the smaller sprockets, which makes it a little bit quieter when you're going along at high speed. You've got easy removal of batteries, easy to charge. Battery life is good. The shifting layout is fantastic. And I particularly like the blips on this bike. I would definitely have blips if I was building a bike with SRAM force on my own bike. Easy to look after with the Axis app, so you can easily configure the layout of the shifting button, see how much battery life you've got, which is a really nice feature. Customize the layout, make sure you've got latest firmware, see how much riding you've done and other things you can do in the app, which you can't do with other group sets. So very modern, uh, very easy to look after. 
The group set also looks more premium than the previous force because they replaced the matte finish with a nice glossy finish matching the previously glossy brake levers. So I think the glossy carbon cranks look really good, as does the rear mech. Just looks um, a bit flasher. But what do you think? Let me know down below. So there we go then. My failed attempt <laughs> at taking the local KOM on a steep climb here in the Cotswolds. But where I failed in that challenge, I set a new PV. So not a total waste of time at all. And it gave me a really good way to test SRAM's new Force ETAP Access Wide group set. Uh, talk you through the details and hopefully communicate why it might be a group set for you. But if you've got any questions about the group set, then do ask away below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, hit that like button. And if you really, really enjoyed it, maybe subscribe to my channel for more cycling tech content coming up over the next few weeks. But that's all for now. What goes up must come down. And this is a fun bit, the reward. So I'll see you all again soon.